Always remember, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law is true in a scientific sense, but we can also apply this to excellent action set pieces in film. No director understands this notion better than Catherine Bigelow. While not every movie she's made in her long career is a smash hit, she certainly knows how to elevate action and change up the formula for the audience to enjoy. I think no film encapsulates that fact better than her 2008 Oscar-winning movie, The Hurt Locker. Bigelow, editor Chris Ines, and Bob Murawski, and DP Barry Aykroyd, and writer Mark Boll crafted a masterpiece of action and suspense on a shoestring budget. To prove my point, I've refined this video essay into one movie scene that I want to break down in detail. For copyright reasons, I can't play the video on my channel, I can only comment on what I'm seeing. It's the opening scene in the movie, so go ahead and open a tab and watch that, then come back, alright? So the first thing we forget about The Heart Locker is that none of these actors were well known at the time. Keep in mind here we have no idea Jeremy Renner showing up later. For all we know, none of these guys are even the main character. They could all be killed in just a matter of minutes. The whole scene is around 9 minutes long. In traditional story structure, the first 15 minutes of the movie should give us a great idea of who's the protagonist and what the conflict is. Right here, these opening 9 minutes establish two main characters, but more importantly, we need it to completely grasp the concept the film is trying to show us. The first minute of the scene is utter chaos. The audience view drops from camera to camera, all to create a greater sense of scope. Zubigal used several 16mm cameras to compose this film. Her goal was to make the effect we're seeing right here. It's all encompassing and we feel as if we're right here with the civilians on the ground. We have no idea where this robot is going or what's causing the panic. At two and a half minutes, we now know three things. The protagonists are revealed and we see they're in control of the robot. Suddenly we feel a little more in control of the narrative as well. Then we see the external conflict. There's a bomb planted by the side of the tracks and it looks heavy duty. However, we're even given the internal conflict that crops up in the entire film in just one brief moment. Watch Thompson scan the windows near them. It's the paranoia of being watched. At any moment, someone could detonate this bomb, and he has no idea where the trigger man is. Just as that slight bit of tension enters the fray, Bull's dialogue is meant to disarm us. It's typical for Bigelow's characters to use machos and talk to relax each other and temporarily de-stress the viewer. I think Point Break provides a few early examples of this in her work. You're gonna jump or jerk off. <laughs> That's my man! So the next two minutes feature the perfect example of prime action movie structure. The external conflict is seen by the main characters. They take a moment to reflect before finding a solution to the issue. The audience sees their experts, and based on the discussion, they're ready to execute on their decision. Right then, Bigelow moves the goalpost. Not once, but twice. First, the goats take away visual and distracts the team. Then the wagon breaks and the robot is no longer a viable solution. Thompson knows that the best thing to do now is to suit up and take the explosives there by hand. The next phase of the scene is slowly building back up the tension through tiny visual clues and then relaxing the tension with dialogue. The guys are all joking through the suit up and then the walk to the place the charges. All of that is de-escalation. Countering that is the eternal conflict that remains unaddressed by the characters. The first person perspective shot, rooftop moments, and Eldridge searching the cars all tell us this isn't a done and over situation. Here you're both expecting the worst, but being told it's all routine. All that is meant to give you anxiety, like watching a balloon getting overinflated. Now all that goes to hell in a handbasket the minute Eldridge sees the butcher with a phone. In only a minute, we're given a massive amount of information. Thompson's only 25 out, meaning he's in the den zone. We don't know if this guy's actually the trigger man, and Eldridge possibly hesitated for too long to get a clear shot. Meanwhile, Sanborn has abandoned his role because his only hope is to stop the guy before he does something terrible. Then, in a flash, there's an action. With that comes an equal and opposite reaction. I mean that in both the real world sense and a part of the story. See, action needs consequence to matter. Sparks and gunfire don't mean anything if it's all done for set dressing. This opening scene lays out the stakes. Thompson's death hangs over Sanborn, Eldridge, and us. Without this moment, we might begin to believe these random character actors 
have plot armor. The rest of the movie hinges on making you feel every explosion and every shot matters. Bigelow does this with every action movie she directs. The shootouts and car bombs in Zero Dark Thirty carry weight. Every missed shot in every one of her films matters. The bad guys and the good guys don't just fire each other to keep the action going. Action is what it's supposed to be in her films. It's a force acting against another object to create a reaction. I think the sniper scene in the movie pushes this point even further. Think about how frustrated you when Sandborn misses a shot, or when Eldridge doesn't act quickly enough. Every moment of action, and even the lack of action in crucial moments, only furthers the story. Catherine Bigelow is the master of tension and release. I'd argue she understands the cathartic weapon violence plays in movies better than even Tarantino does. So yes, The Herlocker isn't the most realistic war film of all time. Are forgetting this is the same director who made Point Break? Why are we holding her to some made up standard? The best part of her best movies is the fact the action matters and it generates emotional results. We still grasp the theme of Hurt Locker without it being real to life. War is a drug and Sergeant James is hooked on the tension it creates. That right there is what makes Bigelow a director worth studying. I hope you all enjoyed this more focused video. I didn't want to distract from all the great work Bigelow has done over her career. I just believe this opening scene explained my thoughts too perfectly to ignore. As always, I'll leave you all with a hint to the next video and thank you for supporting my channel.